Hello and welcome to lesson 7 of our interior modeling and rendering tutorial. On the last lesson we worked on the ceiling and a few other objects. In this tutorial we'll be creating this section here and the curtains. So let's go over and start off by making the curtains. I'm going to make them outside then I'll bring them in when we're ready. So go over and maximize your top viewport. And now we want to use NURBS modeling. Go over to your Create tab. Make sure you've got the shape selected. And this normally we use the spline, but this time go over and select the NURBS curves. As soon as you hit that, select the point curve. And now we're going to start drawing our curtains. So I'm, I'm zooming in quite close to this so I can use that as reference. So we want to start off by making the bottom part. So just click and drag to create something similar to what I'm making here. And then we're going to make another line again. Hit backspace if you happen to make a mistake like I have there. So I'm quite happy with that. When you're done, use the right click on your mouse to get out of the create mode. And then now we're going to create the third one. This time we're going to make, we're going to make sure it's a little bit smaller, like so. So mind you, we're making the curtain right now. I'm quite happy with that. Whilst that's still selected, get your select and move tool and just move that one line up to about here. So we've got it in line with our windows. And then get the other line, any of them will do. And then bring that to the middle. Just go to let me go show you what's going on. So we've created three lines and we're going to join them to create our curtains. Select the bottom line and select the modifier panel. As soon as you hit that, this little NURBS window will pop up. Now we want to create a U loft. So go over and select. So go over and select this tab here. As soon as you click that, so start off by clicking on the original line that we selected. Click on that and you notice something weird happening. Now, as soon as you go into the next one, you notice there's this a light dotted line. Select that and then select the third one. And then select that tab again to let go. As soon as you do that, now we're ready to, to play around with it. But you can see we've got everything on point here. I think it looks rather nice. Get your Select and Uniform Scale tool and just bring that in. Make it thinner, like that. And then you can do that for this side as well. You can make it even smaller. I think that's pretty good. We can go over and apply the Edit Poly modifier so we can play around with it further. Like select the vertex and right on top of that, expand the soft selection box. I uh, use the soft selection, so tick that box and then select any of these here. And then you can increase that slightly, maybe fall off, increase that to 45 or and if well, you notice a lot of the vertices are highlighted in a different color so you can play around with those and make your curtain look a bit more realistic and another way to do that would be to apply the FFD modifier 
So go over to your modifier panel. Then apply the F FFD modifier. So I'm, I've selected a 4x4. Four four. Drop that box down. Control the point. And this tool will allow you to, to mess around with it. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Looks detailed enough. As for this tutorial, I won't do anything else to this, but there'll be another tutorial focusing on the curtains and I'll show you how to drill holes into it and do different things. So let's just move this into our scene. So go inside and see what's going on. You might want to reduce that size a little bit. So I think around there. Bring that up and then bring it back. I reckon that's pretty good. Just select this box here. Go over to your parameters and increase the height or decrease it, whichever works. So, about that much. Think, do more, then move it in like so. Can go ahead and apply the edit poly modifier just close that and then delete that part so we've got it as an empty space and then apply the shell modifier to give it a bit of thickness and that's what we have So yeah, so I'm going to move that to the end, around there, and then I'll duplicate that by holding down shift and dragging it to the other side. And there you go. We've got our curtains created. So you can see it a bit clearer. And now for that part, I'm just going to create a box. I might just use this box here actually. So just select that box. Or even this one. Yeah, I'll use this box here. Just select that box shift and drag it to the other side reduce this reduce the width thing that size seems okay and then increase the height so about here increase that and I think that's all right so select the wall again go over to create geometry compound objects boolean now before you do anything we forgot to duplicate this so just hold down shift and duplicate it Say OK. And I will select our wall again. And then uh, pick upper end. As soon as you hit that, we've got we've got a hole there. And now we can bring this back forward. 
up to about here. Maybe copy that again because we might use that as the actual material as well. Go go over and apply the edit poly modifier to it. Select that. Get the inset tool. Just bring that in a little bit and then extrude it like so. Let's make it slightly bigger so that it matches this here. Get your select and move tool and just Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to bring in this one here. We're going to apply the water material to it later. So just make it thin. A little bit small, like that. And then bring that in. Just change the color. So we'll see what's going on. So yeah, I think I'll leave this tutorial there. But we've managed to model everything that we need and we're ready to go on to the next part where we'll be applying the materials and then preparing it with lighting and then rendering it later. I'll just, let me just quickly move these up there. All right, cool. I might just make them slightly longer. So I'm just going to make this slightly taller, like so. Okay, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I'll leave this there. I'll see you on the next tutorial where we'll start applying materials. Now, we won't be making any new materials. We'll be using the standard 3D Studio Max preset like I did on this previous scene. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in today, and I'll see you on the next lesson. Bye for now.